I'm here to walk you through some things that were found in the field in regards to adding and removing networks to an existing site. This video is done uh, in reference to the document adding and removing networks in a configured site. Um, between the two you should be able to figure out how to fix the problem. This is uh, something you can watch while you're looking at the document. Okay, so first I'm going to log into the system as admin and I'm going to do a set network. Oh, that need to spell that right. Okay, so currently you can see we have six networks enabled. Um, CFN is turned on, has no local authorizations in play. Um, T-Check is set up with no network authors or local authorizations enabled. Um, EFS is turned on and notice option 7 is enabled for local authorizations. TCH is also turned on and configured for local authorization. And the last network is bypass, which of course you cannot do local authorization, is not configurable from the command line. Okay, now we also have the fleet table set up with all seven networks. But the customer comes along and has decided to remove CFN from his network configuration. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go into artware with an option file provided by OPW to uh, remove the configuration from the network for CFN. Okay, so I'm going to go off and do that and we'll get back to you in a minute. Okay, we have now returned back from the site controller after uploading the options files from artware. We're back in the terminal now. We just recovered from a reset. I'm going to log back in as admin because you need to be there to get into the site controller for this settings. Okay, so now we do set network and you can see that the CFN network has gone. Okay, but what has happened is all the networks have shifted up on the references. So T-Check happens to still have local authorizations turned on. EFS no longer has local authorization turned on because it shifted up into where T-Check was and did not have it. And if we go to look at TCH, we can see the local authorization is still turned on because the EFS network had it enabled. Okay. Here's where the problem comes in. If you notice bypass, we now have local authorization enabled. Under normal setup for the UI, this is not possible. So you must make sure that you come back in under bypass and reconfigure the system to ensure that you have the appropriate networks or settings configured accordingly. Notice the merchant ID on bypass has also been lost. Okay, so we're going to drop into setup bypass and we're going to change the network number to support the feature. And we set that up and we come back in the bypass. But bypass still has local authorization enabled because by default I cannot turn it off. So you're now stuck in a predicament where the network always has local authorization turned on. This creates a problem for the site controller because you now cannot disable bypass local authorization. The only way to get around this is to either turn off the network prior to bypass that had local authorization on before you change the options file or you find yourself in a position now where you have to re cold start your FSC and start configuration from scratch. Or use artware to take the information that was configured in artware and reload it. But you also have to be cautious in artware that the network references and indexes are reversed. Okay, so now we're going to go into the fleet table. And in the fleet table you can see that the CFN network is still available for the network configuration and the bypass network is also there but it has the wrong reference in the second column referencing the network indexes. Bypass is now network 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to remove bypass from line 8 and we're just going to delete that row and we're going to go oh let's just read line, line 6. Okay so we're going to take line 6 which was previously CFN we're going to reconfigure that to bypass it's going to ask us if we want to change network information and preserve, or change the number and preserve, and we say yes. What's happened now is we've created a scenario where the bypass network 5 is still reflecting the CFN, but it also shows us that we are using the ISO table with an offline reference of 50, as you can see here. 
This is also not a good thing because your references are broken. Also notice that TCH is also referencing network 5, which is also saying CISO and $OFF, which is not available from TCH. So if we go into the TCH network setup and tell it we want to change this and do preserve network information, we can now see that this TCH network is properly configured and has the right information in it with the phone numbers. But there are other references above where EFS, which moved, is also now on the wrong network. I can easily change that to reference 3 and keep that information intact, as I believe. But other changes affect the, the fleet table. So you can see now the numbers and information has been lost. So the reconfiguration of the fleet table and the network settings within the fuel site controller can become very confusing and garbled from the point of removing or adding networks in the field. This main issue is tied to the fact that we allow you to change the network settings by preserving them. I can come in here and reconfigure bypass network but I didn't and I changed its references but my phone numbers are still wrong so changing the references in the network and choosing the option to preserve number and or change the number and preserve the settings you uh, you create this havoc in your system so it's really recommended through uh, network setups and configuration that if you're removing networks from the fuel site controller, you should always go through a cold start procedure to reconfigure your network setup to ensure that it's correct. If you add a network to the fuel site controller, it is also recommended that you go through the fleet table line by line and reconfigure them using the operations of setting the network. So in the case of T-Check, I do not want to preserve my network settings. I want to go through and manually re-enter all the information as it's shown in that line, ensuring that the information that I'm entering is now consistent to what it was before I started. Bottom line here is do not use the feature change number and preserve network configuration. So now as you can see that my networks are reconfigured correctly with the right numbers and the information short of my EFS network that I lost the primary and option phone numbers. This is an example of why you really need to cold start your fuel site controller when removing networks from it and be very careful when adding networks to ensure that your fleet table references are correct, phone numbers are correct, and the very important part is the offline and online settings. These issues if not properly configured, will create issues. Bypass should never have an offline setting. So I hope that's enough information to explain to you how to uh, not misconfigure your site controller or what to be aware of when adding and removing networks from the field. Thank you.